the world is paying close attention to this molecule. It is believed that this molecule is crucial for transitioning away from the fossil fuel era and achieving carbon neutrality. The country with the most of this molecule is expected to be the next energy powerhouse of the net zero era. Recently, Deloitte, one of the biggest global accounting firms, pointed out North Africa, North America, Australia, and the Middle East as the future energy powerhouses. It says they will make tons of money annually exporting this molecule. Moreover, the world has also jumped into competition to seize the technology for storing, transporting, and utilizing this molecule. The name of this molecule is hydrogen. Hello, this is Why on Earth. I'm Sonok Lee, a video journalist living in South Korea. I know it sounds very strange. We're moving away from fossil fuels now, and renewable energy is widely accessible, so most countries will produce it domestically. However, even in the renewable energy era, some countries, like Korea, have to rely on imports because of the regional variations of renewable energy. South Korea doesn't have much space to install solar panels or wind turbines due to the limited land and dense population. But the energy demand is incredibly high. The manufacturing industries like steel, automobiles, and semiconductors require substantial energy, and the scorching summers and cold winters lead to significant cooling and heating demands. Despite this, Korean government has committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2050. How? Through importing hydrogen. Their goal is to import 80% of hydrogen from overseas. And it's not just South Korea. Japan, Germany, and some other European countries also have very specific plans to import hydrogen. Most of you may know that hydrogen is the element that makes up water, along with oxygen. Hydrogen is actually a very powerful and clean fuel that gives off a lot of energy when burned and only emits water. And that is so abundant since 70% of the Earth is made up of water. Moreover, it can be used as both a fuel in itself and as a means for storing and transporting electricity. Well, to understand this, we need to talk a little bit about the nature of electricity. Let me explain it simply. Electricity is made by running generators. However, a crucial characteristic of electricity is that it's difficult to store. While batteries can store some of it, the current battery technology falls significantly short of storing the amount of electricity we typically use. So the electricity that we're using has just been generated by a power plant. It doesn't actually come from somewhere stored. It must be produced exactly when it is needed to mass demand. So far, this process hasn't been difficult at all because we've been using fossil fuels. We can stockpile fuel sources like coal and natural gas and use them for generation immediately when needed. But we can't control solar or wind energy sources. This is one of the biggest barriers to renewable energy utilization. For example, one of the highest electricity demand during winter is for heating. And unfortunately, the peak heating hours fall at night when there is no sunlight. Some might think that, if so, we can just import electricity from abroad by building transmission lines. But there's a big problem here too. Large-scale transmission lines come with high construction cost, and the longer the lines, the more power is lost in transmission. Hydrogen has emerged as a notable solution to this problem of storing and moving electricity generated from renewable sources. Hydrogen doesn't exist on its own because it is extremely lightweight and very likely to escape the Earth. It is always bound to the other atoms, so we need to break down this bond to get hydrogen. Generally, we've been capturing hydrogen that was bound to carbon in the process of using fossil fuels. In the future, however, we'll get most of our hydrogen from water because we need to reduce our use of fossil fuels. The key concept is this. It takes electricity to split water molecules and get hydrogen. The plan is to use this electricity from renewable sources. This is referred to as green hydrogen since there is no carbon emission at all. We can store this clean hydrogen and move it. Then we can use it directly as fuel by just burning it. And we can also use it as a fuel for power plants that make electricity, just like natural gas. While natural resources or electricity themselves can be stored, we can create hydrogen using that electricity. Through this process, we can eventually store, move, and use electricity generated from renewable sources. This is precisely why hydrogen is gaining global attention right now. Actually, we've been talking about very idealistic scenarios so far. 
Hydrogen, however, still faces some challenges, especially in terms of cost competitiveness. Technological advancements are needed in order to lower the price and make it commercialize. Nonetheless, this is not a mere illusion. Surprisingly, numerous players around the world have already bet their stakes on hydrogen. According to World Economic Forum, 30 jurisdictions encompassing the world's major economies accounting for 70% of global GDP have announced state-level hydrogen strategies. The US and China are investing a tremendous amount of money to take the lead in green hydrogen. Japan has announced their plans to invest $107 billion in hydrogen over the next 15 years. Many companies, even world-leading oil manufacturers, are heavily investing in hydrogen research and development. Because there is no other choice to meet the net zero goal unless we're gonna give up on civilization. And therefore, someone who dominates hydrogen will hold the reins of the economy in the future. So who will emerge as the energy powerhouse in the post-fossil fuel era? Firstly, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's the countries that can be the hydrogen exporters due to the rich renewable sources. Another group of countries that will excel in the hydrogen economy are those with advanced technology. Germany and Japan are recognized for being at the forefront of hydrogen-related technologies, while the US, China, and other countries are also heavily investing resources into this field. As I endured this crazy-ass summer, I couldn't help but wonder whether humanity can truly stop this climate change, and I really wanted to find if there is any practical solution. A bit of relief came over me as I looked at the goals governments and businesses are aiming for, but I still wonder if these changes will really kick in fast enough to prevent some serious consequences. So I've decided to keep an eye on how things truly play out. In the coming days, I plan to explore just how far humanity's effort to combat climate change have progressed. What's cool, what's lacking, what more needs to be done. In particular, I'll be covering a lot of hydrogen-related technologies. If you're looking forward to this, please subscribe and stay updated. Thanks for watching.